So we are back and I'm going to be reading some more of um, my story, The Mastermind. Um, the link is, if you want to read along, stories um but the link should be in the description if you want to read along with me um yeah so um i'm gonna be reading it off of my laptop so i'm not gonna be on this screen at all um the the, the whole time i'm reading until um i come back after i'm done reading and then if there's anybody watching live um I can have a little bit of interaction there, <sighs> but um, okay. uh, there is still time to go and subscribe to my Patreon. Uh, like I said before, if you subscribe to my Patreon by Halloween, then uh, there's a special surprise that you can get. So um, that's still going on and you are more than welcome to do that. But I am not going to waste any more time. And I'm just going to go ahead and start reading. Um, this is part two of The Mastermind. Excuse me. So in the last video, um, the last part of the story that we read, um, Damien just told Kat that he had been uh, creating the superheroes, or the, the heroes. Um, he'd been creating the heroes. And he, you know, built their suits, he built their technology, he was watching them and, and helping them uh, fight the mastermind. And, um, and then uh, he told, he asked Kat, you know, will you join me? Will you stay with me? And then they, they kissed for the first time. So that is where we left off. And I'm going to pick up, and this is about halfway down. If you're reading along with me in the story, this is about halfway down um, on the on the the post that says the mastermind part one. I was so happy those first several months. Even though Damien wanted to keep our relationship a secret from the public, I don't want you to be the target of any hate mail, he said. I didn't mind. I was the girl he chose. Out of anyone he could have had, and that was anyone. He picked me. I felt like the luckiest girl in the world despite my tragedies. He wanted to keep my medical progress a secret as well. He wanted to wait to announce it when I was fully recovered instead of small bits of progress at a time. Imagine how they'll react when you walk across the stage without any pain or assistance whatsoever, he said. Not only will it have a bigger impact, but it will also keep reporters from digging into your privacy. I smiled as I agreed. The treatments were working, though slower than I would have liked. And I could walk using the aid of a special pair. And I could walk using the aid of a pair of special leg braces that Damien made for me. But I still used the wheelchair when in public. Damien also brought me in on his work with the masked heroes. They came to him in various ways. Some found him through an anonymous website that Damien had set up. Others came to Frey Labs in the hopes that the genius Dr. Damien Frey could help them. Those people were turned away at first, only for those that Damien saw potential in to be contacted later. Some heroes came, came from the other cities wanting to help ours. I was surprised to see how few of the ones that came to Damien were ordinary humans. Most of them had been affected in one way or another to receive their superpowers. Some were actually born with powers, and a few claimed to be from other planets or dimensions. Damien was very particular about who he decided to help. He didn't want just anyone to risk their lives, only the ones he truly thought could be of help. Every hero that we helped was shown the list of those that came before and told how they all died. Damien wanted to be sure these heroes knew exactly what they were up against. Damien had a friend, a former soldier named Creed, who helped train the heroes in hand-to-hand -hand combat, as well as the use of weaponry. 
Damien built gadgets and tools for the heroes and helped those with powers to learn more about them while learning about them himself. My job, Damien told me, was to provide encouragement and inspiration, to remind everyone about why they were really fighting. They weren't fighting to stop one man. They were fighting to protect the innocent, those like me who couldn't stand up for ourselves. Creed offered more than once to teach me as well, but Damien said no. As long as I was with him, I wouldn't be in any danger, so there was no reason to teach me how to fight or shoot. Even though I thought Damien had let me into every aspect of his life, there were still times when he disappeared, times when no one could find him, and he wouldn't tell anyone where he had been when he returned. He had done that before, but after showing me the hero room, as I had begun to call it in my head, I assumed that was where he had gone, but it kept happening. I should have been suspicious then, but I was too blinded by him to doubt anything he told me. I was too blind to notice that the times Damien disappeared coincided exactly with the times the mastermind was wreaking havoc on the city. It was a year after my accident that I found out the truth. Damien and I had been helping out a young woman named Elaine, hero named Link, because of her ability to connect minds with her opponents and use what she learned to her advantage. She had been unable to create a mind link with the mastermind, and we couldn't figure out why. I tried really hard not to like the heroes that we helped, because I knew how strong the mastermind was, and I knew that they would all die. But Elaine made it hard not to like her at once. She was an optimist, but not the annoying kind. Her optimism was like a breath of fresh air, bright and welcomed, like Damien's was to me. Elaine had only been with us for a few days, but she already felt like a close friend. We were in the hero room, and I was telling Elaine that the one-year anniversary of my meeting Damien was coming up. I wondered if he was going to get me a gift. I wasn't expecting one, but Damien was so generous that it wouldn't have been out of character. Elaine, who was just joking around with me, said that she could make a mind link with Damien to find out. We were joking, playing laughing like friends do. Damien was on the other side of the room, tinkering with something. I don't even remember what it was. Elaine glanced in his direction and then stopped mid-laugh. Her smile faded. Damien stopped what he was doing and slowly looked up at us, at her. What's, I began. I, I can't link with him. Elaine whispered. His mind has the same block as... As whose? asked Damien, taking a step towards us. Go on. Say it. You're him, said Elaine. You're the mastermind. Damien chuckled. I knew you would be the one to figure it out, he said. Someone who can link minds with another. It was the reason I didn't want to bring you in at first. I knew it, it would only be a matter of time before you discovered that you couldn't link with me. But that would have happened whether I brought you in or not. Someone like you would have decided to face the mastermind on your own anyway. I only brought you in because she wanted me to. Damien jerked his head at me. I was frozen. Why? asked Elaine, stand, standing between Damien and me her hand wrapping around a screwdriver. Why pretend to help the heroes? Why? asked Damien, his eyes cold and dark. Because it's the perfect plan. The heroes would never suspect that the one hunting them is the same one helping them. And even though the public doesn't know that part, they all love Dr. Damien Frey. Famous scientist and genius billionaire who's using all his resources to help those caught in the crossfire. I avoid suspicion all while learning about my enemies and how to use their powers against them. For example, Damien reached out and grabbed Elaine by the throat. From helping you, I've learned that your mind link goes both ways and can, therefore, 
be used as a weapon. With his other hand, Damien placed a device against Elaine's head. I was going to wait and use this the next time we faced off in battle, but he shrugged. Plans change. As soon as Damien activated the device, Elaine started to scream. I had backed away so that I was against the far wall. I squeezed my eyes shut and covered my head with my hands in an attempt to block out the screams. This was not my Damien. This couldn't be my Damien. My Damien was kind, caring, helpful. The darkness that I saw inside this man had no place in my Damien. If Damien were the mastermind, then that would mean that he was the one who caused the accident that killed my parents. It couldn't be true. I wouldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. The screaming stopped. There was the sound of a body hitting the floor and then footsteps coming closer to me. I felt Damien's arms wrap around me. I wanted to pull away, but I didn't. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, he said. I'm sorry you had to find out at all. I had hoped to keep this part of my life from you for as long as possible. Why, I asked, my voice muffled against his chest. I was not simply asking why he wanted to keep his secret. That part I could figure out on my own. I was asking so much more. Why did he become the mastermind in the first place? Why hurt all those people? Why bring me into the hero room? Why help me in the first place? Why me? Why did I still love him? Why? Because I love you, he said. I promised to keep you safe, to keep you from danger, and that is what I intend to do. I let out a short laugh as tears filled my eyes. Of course he could say that. He was the danger that I needed protection from. I won't tell anyone, I said. Oh, Catherine, said Damien. I believe that. I truly do. But it hardly matters now. Are you going to kill me? I asked, my voice trembling. Damien pulled me closer and kissed the top of my head. I didn't struggle. No, he said. I'm not going to kill you. I told you that I want you by my side, and I meant it. I've done all I can do as Damien Frey. I own the city. The police, the DA's office, the mayor. He laughed. Just about everyone in a, in a position of authority, really. All answer to me. I've killed so many heroes that they're more of a minor annoyance than a threat to me at this point. Damien Frey was the last constant bastion of hope for the city. Let's see how they do without him. Damien arranged the, arranged the explosion at Frey Labs so that, at first glance, it would have appeared to be a tragic accident, one with no survivors. Then, while the city was grieving over the deaths of the scientists, and of course Damien himself, the mastermind made an announcement admitting to the destruction of Frey Labs and claiming the city for himself. This time, instead of ending his speech with let the games begin, he ended it with, there's no one left to stop me. Playtime is over. Damien brought me to the house he used as a headquarters for the mastermind. It was the most beautiful prison I had ever seen, aside from Damien himself. A three-story, gothic-style mansion. Creed greeted us as we entered the front door. I was only partly surprised to see him. I was given free roam of the house, so long as I didn't try to escape. Not that I would make it far. Damien had men patrolling the grounds at all times with orders to bring me back inside, unharmed, if I ever got too close to the gates. I was given a bedroom, but I never slept there. Damien wanted me by his side at all times, except when he was off terrorizing the city. Even on nights when he wasn't there, I still slept in his bed. I felt empty, except when I was around him. 
He was the only thing that made me feel anything, and I hated myself for it. How are you settling in? asked Creed, sitting beside me on the bed. He was the only one of Damien's men that Damien trusted to be alone with me. It was the day that the mastermind was making his big announcement to the city, so I was left at the house. I spent the day sitting on the edge of the bed in my room, staring outside at the grounds. I hardly moved when Creed spoke. As well as I can when my whole life has been turned upside down again, I said. The man I love turns out to be the one responsible for everything. I hate him so much. I clenched my fists and tears filled my eyes. So why do I still love him? I'm afraid that's a question I can't answer, said Creed. Damien is a crafty one, that's for sure. He always gets what he wants. And ever since he saw you on that stage for the first time, you are what he wants. Why me? I asked again. I had lost count of how many times I had asked that particular question. I think that's a question you'll have to ask him, said Creed. He paused. Before, when you thought you were helping the masked heroes, I offered to teach you how to fight and shoot. That offer is still open. I turned to him, surprised. You'd go against Damien? I asked. You're a good kid, said Creed. When I heard about what he'd done to you, he bit his tongue and corrected himself. When I heard about the accident, it upset me. I, what he did, I interrupted. Did, did Damien cause my accident? Of course he did. The accident was because of a fight between the Unifier and the Mastermind. And since Damien was the Mastermind, but the way Creed spoke made me wonder if it wasn't chance that my parents' car was one of the ones involved. Creed shook his head to indicate that he couldn't say anything more. The point is, he continued, I don't like the idea of you being so close to Damien without a way to defend yourself. He won't hurt me, I said. He loves me. He promised to protect me. He's already hurt you, said Creed. I'm not saying that you should go against him. That is too dangerous. But I would feel better if you could take care of yourself, just in case. You're so kind to me, I said. You're Damien's right hand. You kill for him, torture for him. I've seen what you can do. Why do you care so much about me? You remind me of my little sister, said Creed. She had a boyfriend in high school that was possessive and abusive. I tried to talk to her. I did everything I could, but she insisted that he loved her and wouldn't hurt her. What happened to her? I asked when Creed paused, and I wasn't sure if he would continue. He killed her, said Creed with a sigh. It happened when I, while I was deployed. I wasn't even in the country. When I found out, I went to his house and used what I had learned in the army to give him what I felt he deserved. You killed him, I said. Creed laughed. That's an understatement, he said. By the time I was finished with him, he didn't even look like a man anymore. What did you do? I asked. I covered it up, he said. Never told anyone, and I was never caught. I went back overseas, but that event changed me. I was ruthless, remorseless. I received a dishonorable discharge after going too far in an, in, in an interrogation a few years later. That's when Damien found me. It was before the whole mastermind thing. He was just beginning to build his empire. I joined up with him because he gave me an outlet for my rage. He taught me to use it so that I wouldn't lose control. I hate Damien for what he's done, but he owns me now, just like he owns the rest of the city. Just like he owns me, I said. I was so stupid. I should have seen the signs. I should have... Hey, 
Don't blame yourself, said Creed. Damien is a master at lying and manipulating people. He had the whole city believing in him. So what do I do? I asked. I can't hurt him. I, I couldn't if I wanted to. Let me teach you, said Creed. Even if you never do anything with the skills, at least you'll have them. I hesitated before nodding. Okay, I said. This third stage of my life was fairly similar to the previous stage. Only instead of helping Damien pretend to help the heroes, I sat helplessly while he slaughtered the few that still occasionally popped up. Swan City became even worse than before, if such a thing were even possible. Crime was rampant. Any good and moral people either left the city or were killed. Those who couldn't leave lived in fear. Either that or they became criminals themselves just to survive. Villains from other cities came to Swan City to escape the heat from wherever they were from. Damien would allow them to stay for a while, as long as they promised to swear loyalty to him. Those who refused were tortured until they agreed or were killed. In this way, Damien's influence spread out from Swan City to the neighboring cities. His goal truly was world domination, and he was well on his way. I knew there were still more secrets that he kept from me, even though I spent every second by his side. No human being could do the things that he did. I never saw him use any kind of magic or power during that time, but I knew there was more to him. I tried to find out, but any time I would try to bring it up, or he caught me snooping, he would pull me to his chest, stroke my hair, and tell me that I didn't need to worry about anything. He would take care of me. He was never violent towards me, never struck me or threatened me. From the way he treated me, it would appear that he truly loved me. I told myself that he loved me. It was the only way I could survive. I had my secret lessons with Creed. He showed me how to fire a gun, explained every aspect of it to me, and told me how to aim, but I was unable to have any practical experience because the sound of a gunshot would have alerted the guards. Instead, we focused on physical combat. When wearing the braces Damien made for me, I could move without pain. I could walk, run, even jump almost as well as I could before the accident. When I wasn't wearing the braces, however, even though I was able to walk and run, I could only do so for a short time before my legs began to hurt. I discovered that fighting and dancing had a lot more in common than I would have believed. They both required a measure of physical strength and agility. After more than a year of inactivity, I was not as fast or flexible as I once was, and I had put on a noticeable amount of weight, especially for a former ballet dancer. I was out of shape as well. As a dancer, I practiced every single day. Working with Creed, I could only practice when Damien was out of the house. More than once, I considered quitting. I was never going to leave Damien, so what was the point of all this practice? However, as I spent day after day curled up against Damien's side, doing nothing, I looked forward to those secret training sessions, simply because they gave me the chance to move. I missed just moving. I was not made for a stationary life. Even though I hadn't personally committed any crimes, being the girlfriend of the worst villain in history gave me a constant, unshakable feeling of guilt. I missed the days when Damien and I would help the heroes. I missed doing something good, something to make the world a better place. I knew that the whole thing was a part of Damien's plan and that the kind, generous man that I fell in love with didn't actually exist, but I still missed him. Even though I still physically had Damien by my side, even though I still loved him and always will, I missed the way things were before. I still wanted to be a good person, but I believed it to be impossible. So impossible, in fact, that I nearly let my chance of escape pass me by. It was early evening. 
an old friend of Damien's, a man by the name of Lord Aaron, was visiting Swan City and staying with us. I sat, curled up beside Damien on one sofa. Lord Aaron and his wife Lilith were on a sofa opposite us. Creed stood guard at the door. It was just after dinner, and Damien and Lord Aaron were already drunk. I was drunk as well. The life I led, I needed something to help keep me numb. Lilith was the kind of woman who was bored with everything. She leaned against her husband, a glass of wine in one perfectly manicured hand and her phone in the other, and rested her feet against the other arm of the sofa. Every now and again, Lord Aaron would laugh hard enough to make Lilith nearly spill her wine. She would simply roll her eyes and continue scrolling on her phone. I didn't have a phone. I had not been able, I had not been allowed to use a phone or a computer or any other way to contact the outside world since Damien brought me to his house. I rested my head against Damien's chest and had nearly fallen asleep when a movement outside the window caught my eye. I blinked and rubbed my eyes. I thought I had seen a child outside. Are you getting tired, Cat? asked Damien. Why don't you go on to bed? I'll be up later. I nodded, realizing that Damien misunderstood me rubbing my eyes for me being sleepy. Good night, Damien, I said, kissing him. Good night, said Damien. Good night, Catherine, said Lord Aaron. It was a pleasure to meet you, wasn't it, Lilith? Uh-huh, said Lilith without looking up from her phone. I nodded to Creed as I passed him. If everyone thought that I went to bed, then maybe I could sneak outside and investigate. I went up the main staircase and then quickly headed back down the back stairs and out the back door. I snuck around the house in the opposite direction that I thought I saw the child headed so that I would meet her head on. I heard someone coming and ducked into the shadows. I suddenly wondered what I would do if I were caught outside. What would I say? Looking back, I don't think it really mattered. I had never tried to escape before. I could have said whatever I wanted, made up any excuse, and nothing would have happened. I would have simply been escorted back inside. As it was, I didn't have to worry in the first place. As the someone came near, I realized that it was the child I had seen out the front window. She was a young girl, six years old, holding tightly to the hand of her older teenage sister. Both girls had blonde hair and blue eyes that shone even in the darkness. Their hair was messy and they had dirt, or was that blood, on their faces. They were scared, that much was clear. I hesitated. What should I do? How did they get past the guards? I didn't want to call the guards, but I also didn't want to get in trouble by trying to help them. I heard a small gasp, which brought me out of my thoughts, and noticed that both girls were looking right at me. The older one tightened her grip on the younger one, and I saw her step backwards, preparing to run. Wait, I whispered. I'm not going to hurt you. The older girl narrowed her eyes at me. I, I want to help, I said, still unsure. The older girl shook her head. I saw you with the other man, she whispered. I saw you kiss him. You're just trying to trick us. You're just like Lilith. No, I'm not, I said. I don't want to hurt people. Then why are you, the girl began. Shh, I heard another sound. Someone's coming, follow me. The older girl paused for just a moment, but decided that taking her chances with me was better than getting caught. I had to think fast. Where could I take them? My room. Damien and Creed wouldn't think to look in there, and no one else was allowed. I led them back the way I come, back the way I had come, in through the back door, up the back steps, and into my bedroom. You'll be safe in here until I can think of what to do next, I said. Thank you, said the younger girl. I smiled at her and then looked up at the older girl. How did you get here in the first place? I asked. How did you get past the guards? Lord Aaron brought us in, said the other girl angrily. He killed our parents and then kidnapped us. Same with you, right? Asked the younger girl. 
Not exactly, I said. Damien killed my parents, yes, but he didn't kidnap me. I paused. Or maybe he did, but I didn't realize I was being kidnapped at the time. Both girls looked at me confused. They didn't react when I mentioned Damien's name, so they clearly didn't know who he was, who he pretended to be. It's a long story, I said, and I'll tell you all about it once I figure out how to get you out of here before Lord Aaron realizes you're gone. I'm Hannah, and this is my sister Olivia, said the older girl. Olivia waved at me. I'm Catherine, I said, but you can call me Cat. Why are you helping us? asked Hannah. You said you want to help us, that you don't want to hurt people. But you were leaning against the other man, Damien, like you're together. I really don't have a good answer for that, I said. Like I said, it's a long story. I can't trust you unless you tell me, said Hannah. I need to know that you're not going to turn us in. I won't turn you in, I promised. Damien pretended to be someone else, and I didn't realize the truth until it was too late. He betrayed me, trapped me. I've been too afraid to escape. But it's not just me anymore. I have to get you two safe. I don't know Lord Aaron, except for what I saw tonight, but I do know Damien. I know what he's capable of, and I can't let him hurt you two if there's something I can do about it. Damien will be coming upstairs soon, and if I'm not in bed, he'll suspect that something's up. Stay here until I come back. Once everyone else is asleep, then we can escape. If you're lying to us, I'll kill you, said Hannah. Her voice was strong and her eyes were full of distrust, but I could see the fear behind them. I had no doubt that she was serious with her threat. She would have tried to kill me if I did anything to make her see me as a threat. I'll be back, I promised. And then all three of us will escape. I didn't know how. I had no plan at that point except to wait until everyone was asleep. But I knew the manor and its grounds. I knew the guard's patrol route, and I knew that there was a gap in the fence around back. Creed showed it to me himself. I knew what I could do. I went back to the room I shared with Damien and went through the whole plan in my mind. When Damien came in, I pretended to be asleep. I let him pull me closer as he laid down beside me. I felt the now familiar feeling of wanting to be as far away from him as possible, while at the same time wanting to burrow cl closer. The mixture of love and hate, revulsion and pleasure. I second-guessed myself thought about forgetting about the girls hiding in my bedroom and just letting things go back to the way they've been. I couldn't do that. I knew that Damien wouldn't hurt me, but Hannah and Olivia were just children. Lord Aaron would definitely hurt them if I didn't help them. Finally, Damien's breathing turned into soft snoring. As gently and quietly as I could, I slipped out from his arms and out of the bed. If he woke up, I would claim to be going to the bathroom. He would believe me. He didn't have any reason not to. I looked at my leg braces, sitting on a chair near the bed. It hurt to walk without them, but they were not quiet. There was also the possibility that Damien had put a tracker in them. A very strong possibility. I left them where they were and snuck into my bedroom. Hannah looked surprised to see me. You actually came back, she said. I told you I would, I said with a smile. Now let's get you out of here. Let's get us all out of here, said Hannah. I nodded. We made it outside without being seen and went around back, through the garden. I paused. The garden didn't stretch all the way to the fence like I thought. There were several, there were several yards of nothing but grass between us and freedom. There were no places to stop and hide if someone came by. We could try to make a run for it between patrols, but without my braces, it was risky, and the guards had guns. It was our only chance. On my signal, we make a break for it, I said to Hannah and Olivia. 
There's a gap in the fence straight across from us. Keep running for it, no matter what happens. The girls nodded and got ready to run. I had timed the guards' patrol. I knew how much time we would have. Go, I whispered as soon as the guard passed by us. We ran. I ignored the pain that started in my legs. I could see Hannah and Olivia beside me. The fence grew closer. We were almost there. We were going to make it. We reached the fence and I stopped to let Hannah and Olivia crawl through first. Where do you think you're going? Asked a voice as a hand grabbed me from behind. I, I, I was, I stammered. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Hannah disappear into the trees on the other side of the fence. I was just, just trying to escape, growled the guard. We'll see what Damien has to say about that. Let her go, came Creed's voice. She was trying to escape, said the guard, roughly shoving me in front of him. I can see that, said Creed, aiming his gun at the guard. And I'm sure Damien will have something to say about that, but you know the rules. No one is to lay on uh, no one is to lay a hand on Catherine. She'll come quietly, won't you, Catherine? I nodded my head. As long as I knew Hannah and Olivia were safe, I didn't care what happened to me. I don't believe her, said the guard. He shoved me to my knees, twisting my arm behind my back. I cried out in pain. Without warning, Creed shot the guard between the eyes. I scurried towards Creed and away from the dead guard. Creed helped me to my feet and put his gun in my hand, holding it so that the barrel was pressed against his stomach. If Damien finds out that I helped you escape, he'll torture me, said Creed. We have to hurry. Damien will have heard that gunshot. Then come with me, I said, trying to pull my hand free. Escape with me. Creed shook his head. It's too late for me, he said. I've been a monster so long, it's all I know. This way, we can both be free. I won't shoot you, I said. I can't. I know, said Creed. That's why I'm going to help you. He adjusted his grip over my hand, and before I could pull away again, pulled the trigger. Creed winced, and then smiled. Go, he said, his voice a pained whisper. Get out of here. Be free. Don't come back. I couldn't move. I could see Damien coming out of the house. He looked at me. I had time to run, but I didn't. I couldn't. I had just killed Creed, my friend. Damien wouldn't forgive that. Cat? said Damien, suddenly right beside me. He had moved too quickly. What have you done? I thought... I didn't give Damien time to finish his sentence. I wasn't even aware that I was still holding the gun until it went off. Damien looked down in surprise at the growing dark stain on his shirt. He looked back up to me, his eyes filled with hurt and betrayal. Catherine... I pulled the trigger three more times. Damien dropped to the ground. I dropped the gun and knelt by his side. Damien's hand reached weakly for mine, and I took it. I'm sorry, I sobbed. I'm so sorry. I had to. I'm sorry. Damien looked like he wanted to say something, but no sound came out. I love you. I said as Damien's eyes closed and his hand went slack. I will always love you. I cried over his body until the sounds of the guards, which I had been ignoring up to that point, got too close. It was now or never. I gave Damien one final kiss, picked up the gun from where I dropped it, silently thanked Creed for helping me, and dove through the hole in the fence. I looked back once more at Damien before turning and running into the trees. I loved him as much as I hated him. So that's the end of uh, what I'm going to read today. That's the, the end of the, the written part one, but 
uh, video wise, it's part two. Um, yeah, that that's it. So, um, if you're watching it on YouTube, there will be a link to the written story, and then um, there's going to be a link to um, part one. When I recorded part one, um, the the feed went out halfway through, or part way through. So part one reading part one is broken up into two videos um but uh, i'll have a link to the first part of that and then you can find the second video through there but um that that's it uh, i don't know when the next stream will be but then i you know i'll still be reading there's still two more written parts which will probably end up being four more videos um but i'm really hoping that you guys are enjoying the story uh, please, please leave comments and let me know what you think. Uh, tell me about, you know, your, do you have a favorite character so far? Um, that's one thing I'm really big on is, is my characters. So let me know what you think of Damien so far. Or what, let me know what you think of Damien. Let me know what you think of Kat so far, what you think of um, Hannah and Olivia and just, just Creed and the different characters. Uh, let me know what, what you think. Um, yeah. So I guess that's it. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Bye.